So, a few weeks ago, I went to Tony Robbins' Unleash the Power of Within in Sydney, Australia. It was a four-day event and I had a great time. And in this video, I wanted to provide a bit of a review, starting off with the good aspects of the event, the things I learned, the things I enjoyed. In another video, I'm going to talk about the negative aspects of things I thought could be improved on, the things I didn't like. I'm going to do that in another video if you want to see that. If you want to see the negatives, just switch to that video, which I'll probably post the day after the one I'm going to upload right here, right now. So, uh, let's go on to the negatives. Sorry, let's go on to the positives. <laughs> it was a really emotional event. And I think that was the best part of the event, is how emotional Tony made it. How much of an experience he made it. How much your state and your feeling mattered. And I think that was the biggest takeaway for me. Because you can learn all these things online. It's not rocket science. You can learn about changing your subconscious mind. You can learn about what limiting beliefs are. But if you stay with that intellectual mind, you might find the limiting beliefs come back or you might find a real change or a real shift hasn't been created in your life. What I really found was effective about Unleashed a Part Within is not that you go to this four-day event and your life has changed because I don't think four days is enough. You need to continue with those habits. The key here is you spent four days priming yourself and understanding the importance of moving yourself into the right mental state intentionally. And so intentionality is a thing I took out of the event. Being very intentional with what you are doing and re-priming and re-triggering triggering yourself to the things that are going to have the greatest change in you. you know, if you're not playful enough, you're not funny enough, you're not something, you're the first person ever to think that. Oh, they're not even your thoughts. These shitty thoughts are other people's thoughts. But here's the secret. When you use your channel changer, this is it. When you're in this state, you tune in to all the bullshit channels that will make you overwhelmed. When you're in this state, you'll drive through anything. You'll bring in a different movie. You can turn into the comedy channel, the epic, the romantic comedy, the adventure, the drama, the horror picture. And the way you use your body determines which part you tap into of those thoughts. How many follow this? Say I. So let's start with the first day which talked about priming, priming your state. And that day ended on a fire walk. We walked over burning hot coals. And the key here was to learn how you can actually change your state effectively. You can change your state by thinking of past memories. And when you can think of things you have done in the past that you are incredibly grateful for, happy to be in. Maybe it could be, and they even talk about romantic moments. They talk about um, moments where you accomplished something. By the oh, mind, wow, you did it. But by the way, your brain is designed to make you survive. It's not designed to make you happy. That's your job. For you to be happy, you have to do something very simple. You have to find something you can be thankful for, something to be grateful, something you can appreciate. And in every moment, is there something you can appreciate or be grateful for, yes or no? Just write it down. Bringing yourself back to the emotions and the memories of the past is important because it helps to evoke that emotional state and it helps you remember those memories better. We often just remember we often just remember the 
negative things in our lives. I know that's so true for me. I, I can remember negative things, but what about all the positive things that you've done this year, this week, this month? I bet there's more than you can think of. And the reason it's hard to think about them is because we often don't think about them. Because we often underappreciate those things. But as Tony said in the first day, our brain distorts, deletes, and generalizes positive emotions. It removes those because it doesn't necessarily help us survive when we were cavemen. And so now that we are living in a different world, being able to reprime yourself and re-trigger yourself into these positive states was something that I thought was really cool and something I've continued doing after this event. And I think for many people, this priming and the importance of emotionality is probably one of the biggest things they got out of it. Maximize the opportunity. Look at you in finances if you can stay in a beautiful state no matter what, keep learning and growing and moving forward. Where could you be five or ten years from now financially if you really met? So yes, I would say on the first day, being there and feeling those emotions was really powerful and really key. What's an issue though that I see could affect people? Well, the issue I, I, I see could potentially affect people is, is if they don't have a strong background in meditation or visualization or anything like that, it's possible that people could struggle to get in these emotional states again. Now, with Tony being there, with all these people being in the room, being, being um, surrounded by so much loving energy and really strong, inspiring energies, it's easy to get into those states. But when you are back home after the event, although you can remember those things, I think it could be potentially, dif potentially difficult for some people who um, don't have that background and so it might require a lot of practice to get back there and that's something I've noticed with these four days is it was kind of like a taster course um, where you're having a little taste of all these things and the best part of it was that emotionality and that teaching um, but if you but they didn't really provide enough of the background um, that could be necessary for somebody that is quite new to these kind of concepts, is quite new to meditation, is quite new to spirituality. So, well, I, wasn't, I said I wasn't going to cover negatives or improvements in this video, but I guess I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> we'll see what I do in the next one. That was the first thing. Um, and, and yeah, both even the limiting belief process that we did, the Dickens process, something new for me was learning about um, both getting into that positive aspect but also the negative aspect, which is imagining what would happen if you didn't do, well sorry, if you continue to have that bel limiting belief in your life, how is that limiting belief going to affect you? And what you are doing here is you are catastrophizing. You are imagining the worst situation, the worst outcome. You are imagining your world falling apart if you have this limiting belief. The purpose, the purpose here is to evoke such strong negative emotions that you see what is at stake and it motivates you to change. This was a very cathartic kind of experience because uh, you look around and people are crying, well, crying and screaming together. We are in anguish. We are in these really strong negative emotions. And it went on for quite some time, maybe half an hour, maybe longer. Um, he first asked, you know, five years. 
you, you haven't changed for five years. What does your life look like if you haven't changed for five years? In ten years, it's just not where you wanted to be. And then he said, 20 years with this limiting belief holding you back. How does it hold you back in your relationships? How does it hold you back in these different aspects of your life? And it was a really crazy experience um, to be surrounded by 9,000 people crying and screaming. And we're all doing this together. So that was day three. Um, day one and day three, the days with Tony was there were definitely the best. Um, and so that's what I really took out of this event. Not necessarily some of the planning stuff, although that was useful, um, but the emotionality. Circling back to some of the um, strategies, I, I think... This could be very powerful for somebody that hasn't done much self-development or hasn't really looked into these things. And I think it was a very, very good reminder as well of different things to think about in your life and thinking about where you are now, thinking about where you um, want to be in the future and trying to bridge that gap if there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be, how do you bridge that gap? What's in the way? And then also focusing, this is really cool, and is something um, that I took away from it. It was focusing on that why. Um, why do you want to achieve the thing you want to achieve? And what do you want to achieve? What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? rather than thinking of the how, because the how holds us back. The how is like, oh, how do we do it? And suddenly so many limitations can start to come into our minds. But when you think of what you want, the life you want to achieve, um, then the how doesn't matter as much because you will figure it out. You will figure out a way. And that's, uh, yeah, like something I, I took from the event. Um I think overall, um, there are also a few aspects where it could be potentially confusing or contradictory, or or even aspects of the teachings overall that lacked nuance. I know Tony cares a lot about simplicity, and this is great for people, especially as you get older, you gain more wisdom and understanding. And so you are able to uh, really take other people's content and tailor it to your life in a, in a more effective way. But I think um, if you aren't able to do that so much, uh, some of the things that they taught might be a bit harder to replicate at home or you might not gain the same... Uh, change from it and I think that's where they fell short a little bit and where they actually try to sell their other courses um, by saying hey we have all these more complete courses that you can sign up for uh, and you know unleash the power within it within is just a taster course almost which is how they kind of talked about it and how people um, that I met talked about it um, which I feel like it didn't have to be the case because in the four days they could have juggled around the content and um, really covered more and really gone a bit more in depth in, in some areas um, and, and removed some of the time wastages. But yeah, I get it. They're running a business and uh, they want to upsell to you and things like that. Um, finally, let me just talk about the people I met. Um, great. People, they're great motivated people, uh, as and some great connections that I formed. And I think in events like this, being surrounded by like-minded people, people that you can meet, people that are positive, uh, people that own businesses, a lot of people own businesses, things like that. It's great for networking. 
and although I didn't do a huge amount of networking, I can see a lot of people getting a lot of benefit out of it. And so, yeah, I think even if just the networking, the networking aspect could be um, helpful or um, compelling for somebody to want to go to one of these events. So yeah, that's basically my, my review for the great, the good aspects. I want to make another video on the uh, more negative aspects and go and get from that. Um, well, every day, that's where the joy is. That's where the gifts are. What's the worst consequence if you believe that for years? I'm too young, I'm too young. I wouldn't start. I would wait until I was 45, 50. So what would that destroy? Well, I think you'd destroy your future by sabotaging and limiting all your beliefs. Next thing you know, years have gone by, or it's like five years, or going up to decades. You're in your mid-40s, your teeth are falling out, drinking pits on the weekend, having a great old time, complaining about how fucking poor you are, watching the footy on the weekend, like, fuck yeah, can't wait for my shit job on Monday. What would this destroy? I'm never going to find love. I've got a curse that it never goes over three months. What's the truth that would set you free if you owned it? That I am loved and I am enough. So what most you've done is assemble the belief with a bunch of legs that you look for where you call beige things brown and now you're certain that's how life is. But we could sweep the legs and free you up from that and build a new tabletop with a new belief called the truth. She te over tests, she wants instant commitment, and when she doesn't get it, she runs, either by pushing away run, or she runs. She'll say, there's something wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with her. She's just living her current wiring. So maybe it's time to do some simple new wiring. So I want you to realize everything in your life comes down to this. And give this lovely lady a big hand. Thank you very much. The magician comes up and has this really cool card case with his logo on the ring. When I open it, makes a really cool pop sound. Listen. <laughs> if that doesn't scream trick deck, I don't know what does. If you really want to unleash the power within, may we all hate just a little less. May we all blame just a little less. And may we all forgive just a little bit more. Can I get out of all four of these days? Again. Life will never be the same again. 